Hi and welcome to this video covering Cubase 9's new frequency plugin. Now anyone who's been using, well doing any kind of audio engineering for a while but been using Cubase will probably have come up against a few limits with the flexibility of the included channel EQ. This was improved a couple of versions ago with the addition of the uh, pre section which gives a high cut and a low cut filter. Uh, but still isn't as flexible as a lot of users would like, particularly when you're working on a complicated mix, etc. So that has been addressed to a significant degree by the new frequency plugin, which comes with Cubase 9, which we're going to look at now. So here it is. It looks like a lot of third party EQs. Uh, it has eight bands on it. Um, each one of them is more flexible than the corresponding band in the channel EQ. Uh, and overall, it gives us loads of uh, extra options that we wouldn't have otherwise. So we're just going to take a quick look at it. So as you would imagine, it has a uh, spectrum analyzer included in it, which is configurable because you can have it in bars if you prefer that uh, to look at what's uh, happening across the frequency range or there uh, with separate channels showing as well. If that's what you want to go, you can get rid of peak hold, etc. Uh, so there's plenty of flexibility there. Um, in terms of the EQ that's actually provided, we've got uh, eight bands which are pretty configurable. So six of the bands, so from band two to seven, have uh, four modes, uh, one of which is particularly welcome. So we've got uh, low shelf, high shelf and peak, which are fairly common to most EQs. But we've also got notch. So if we look at these uh, separately, uh, if we turn up, let's say, band four to that changing between peak and notch you'll notice that it's much narrower so obviously if we turn the Q all the way up you can see that the notch is way narrower than the peak EQ allowing some really precise tuning to a particular frequency so particularly at a time when you wish to uh, cut something in particular if you've got some main sum etc so for that obviously you would be all the way down at 50 Hertz here and 60 Hertz uh, in some other countries um, really useful for that you will have the minimum effect on other frequencies obviously it's not possible just to affect a solely one frequency but this is much much closer than you've ever been able to get with the default EQ so that's uh, a really useful uh, thing to have added in in addition bands one and band six have more modes so we've got these cuts with, with anything from a 6 db let's turn that up to somewhere where you can really see what's going on so from 6 db going all the way up to 96 db so that's really really severe but it doesn't come without downsides because obviously if you've got audio which strays into this it is going to get clobbered as soon as it does so so you've got to be precise with setting this and be you know ensure that you're not going to have anything which is going to get down into there but if you if you need to do this that's really useful and again 96 db per octave is twice as severe as the cut possibilities which are available in this version of cubase and obviously in previous version of cubase uh, that wasn't available either so if you're coming from a few versions ago then this will all be very welcome if you've not found another solution for that already um, each of the EQ bands can be put into linear phase mode where it takes into account the change in phase which happens as a result of the EQ and calculates for that and compensates for it. So if you turn that on and off while you are um, auditioning your EQ, you'll hear the typical uh, dropout in audio that you get when Cubase changes uh, compensation for a plug-in, etc. And that's fairly standard. Um, certainly linear EQs are things which have been preferred by mastering engineers so you may find you uh, prefer the sound of them but then again you may find you actually prefer the sound of the non-linear phase EQs. Uh, welcome we've got a invert button come back which was on the channel EQ for a bit and then vanished so now you can find sort of seek and destroy your frequency and then flip really easily rather than having to grab the knob and bring that down. Uh, we've got different EQ modes as well. So the standard EQ, if we're on a stereo channel, because it varies depending on what uh, topology you've got on the channel in question, but if we've got a 
stereo channel, we've got three different modes we can be in. So we can be in standard stereo mode where the same EQ is applied to left and right. Uh, we can be in left and right mode here where each part has its own EQ. So you can see that the left channel has gained the controls which I had before. The right channel at the moment does not, but then we can put in a different amount again or a different Q, any different settings we want uh, to do that. So if you've got something that is only needed in one channel, such as some uh, drum, bizarre drum overheads I had uh, earlier on in the year, this would have been straightforward to do rather than the approach I had to take where I had to split it into two mono tracks and EQ them separately. So this is this is really good, particularly for fixing uh, issues which uh, happen on things when they get recorded and they're slightly compromised shall we say the other mode we have is mid and sides so this is this is sort of a variation on this so this allows you to apply one eq to the mid channel and one eq to either side so again you can use this creatively but it can also be for dealing with issues and hopefully to a degree can help you compensate if you've got an ms recording where you've got perhaps some problems with the the mic particularly the sides mic you know maybe the sides aren't as bright as you would like them to be you can try to compensate it for this uh, to a degree it's, it's i'm sure the purists are all sharpening their blades as i say this at the moment but i've i've experimented with this a bit over the time i've been playing around with uh, cubase 9 it had some um useful results with it so this is a really welcome addition what i also like is the piano keyboard underneath so while you can get the notes, you can see down the bottom right, we or oh, bottom left or wherever I go, um, or top right, in fact, it tells you what note you're on. It's also easy to see it on the keyboard here. You can turn the keyboard off. I'm not sure what the benefits of turning the keyboard off are, but there we go. And the colour of each uh, EQ band is reflected on there, so you see which note is centred on. Uh, another welcome thing is we've got uh, an output meter and an overall output control. So often you may want to keep your peak level the same uh, with and without the plug-in and this allows you to account for that so you can account for the plug-in uh, being present and then you can get the same peak level so that can be really useful and also sometimes it can be really useful just if you've not got enough gain or if you've got too much gain uh, on a channel so you can just you can just deal with it here and it saves having to do uh, some of the other bodges we need to do so frequency is a really great addition um, I'm hoping there will be an option for it to be integrated into the channel by default at some point so you would be able to swap the standard EQ for that but obviously you can see that the the real estate that it takes up on your screen is immensely more it's like the difference between a HD TV and 4k it's like nearly four times the number of pixels so that may not be an option which um, everybody is keen on but I, I really like this plugin I've spent say a fair bit of time playing around with it it's become my my my, my go-to Cubase uh, EQ because I like the way it works and I li I, with a lot of the changes in Cubase 9 I like the fact that they're integrated in and if you use this um, rather than the third-party plug-in you know that if you send your file elsewhere it's going to work the same way on someone else's machine as it is on on yours and you're not tied to a plug-in that may you know expire or not be 64-bit etc so another not a, not a huge step forward but again it's it's another uh, thing in Cubase 9's arsenal which I think makes it much more usable than it was without it. If you've enjoyed these videos and found them useful then subscribe by clicking on the MTT logo in the bottom of the screen now. Also visit musictechtuition.com for tips, tricks and advice as well as information about the books I've written, the complete guide to music technology using Cubase 9 and Music Tech A-Level using Cubase 9. These are a great resource, whether you're just getting started or you've been working for a few years now. The information in them will allow you to take your sequencing, recording and production to the next level and give you a well-rounded grounding in all areas of music technology.